Hello and welcome to our webinar on setting up Dexcom apps. My name is Michelle. I'm a certified diabetes educator here at Dexcom. Today I'm going to be reviewing three different Dexcom apps. So the three apps that we'll be discussing today are the Dexcom G5 mobile app, the Dexcom Clarity Report app, and the Dexcom Follow app. The Dexcom G5 mobile app is the main app that works in conjunction with the Dexcom G5 system. It allows you to view your glucose and receive alerts on a smart device. So if you're at all familiar with the Dexcom receiver, it essentially provides you with all the same functionality and features that a receiver would, but on your smart device. The Dexcom Clarity Report app interfaces with your Clarity account and it allows you to view some of the graphs and charts that Clarity has to offer on your phone. It also allows you to share some of your Clarity reports with your physician from your phone. Now, The Dexcom Follow app is an app that works in conjunction with the Dexcom Share feature. Dexcom Share allows a patient to share their glucose information in real time with up to five loved ones or family family members called followers. So the followers install the follow app on their device and that follow app allows them to view the sharer's glucose data and receive alerts when the sharer's glucose is too high or too low. Now we do also have a list of smart devices that are compatible with these apps on our website under FAQ. But let's first discuss how you're going to set up the Dexcom G5 mobile app. When you download this app from the App Store and install it on your smart device and you open it for the very first time, it's going to ask you to log in with a username and password. So if you've created a username and password with Dexcom in the past, make sure you use that same username and password to log in. But if you've never created an account with Dexcom before, there is a sign up option. You can create an account and create a username and, uh, username and password to log in. But once you've successfully logged into that G5 app, you'll just click on the Let's Get Started button and then you'll have to agree to some terms of use. The app will then walk you through some precautionary statements about your Dexcom system. The first being that you want to make sure you use your glucometer in conjunction with your Dexcom system. Particularly when you're determining any kind of treatment decision, you want to make sure you continue to base that decision off of your glucometer reading, not your Dexcom value. And we'll then talk about the contraindication with Tylenol, otherwise known as acetaminophen, that can create falsely high readings on your Dexcom. And then it will also remind you that you don't want to expose any component of your Dexcom system to an MRI, a CT scan, or diathermy medical equipment. It will then ask you to set your low and your high alert. The low alert is going to default to 80. You could keep it there or you could modify it. But one thing to consider is you probably do want to set your low alert just slightly higher than what you consider a hypoglycemic episode to be. So that way the Dexcom really does what it's intended to do, which is to alert you before your hypoglycemic episode happens, or at the very least at the very beginning of that hypoglycemic episode. The high alert is going to default to 200. Again, you can keep that or you can modify it. Some people do choose to set their high alert at sort of the upper limit of their target glucose range at let's say 180 or 200, but others do feel that that would be alerting them too often. And so they do choose to raise it up a bit and pick a level that maybe they're supposed to consider taking some kind of action like checking the urine for ketones. So these are completely modifiable and you can change them at any time. And it's definitely helpful probably to get guidance from your physician as well when determining where to set your high and low glucose alert. The next screen will explain to you that you need to give the app permission to send you notifications. So if you want the app to be able to alert you for a high and a low glucose, you do need to give it permission to do so. So when you get that prompt, you'll go ahead and say, okay. And then the next screen will talk to you about how the alerts work on your G5 app. So if you're using the newest version of the G5 app, version 1.5, the alerts on the app do have the ability to override your phone settings, meaning that if your volume is set very low or if you have the mute switch or do not disturb option enabled, the app will have the ability to override those phone settings, meaning if your ringer is turned off or turned all the way down and you have the mute switch or do not disturb option enabled, the first alert you'll get on your smart device is the vibration 
vibration only. And then if you miss that initial vibration or alert and you don't clear it or silence it, it will result in an audible alert with increasing volume every five minutes until you clear or silence the alarm. But you may want to check what version of the app you have just to confirm that you know, your alerts really will work that way. The next screen will talk about the fact that your G5 app is going to communicate with your transmitter via Bluetooth. So you do want to make sure that you keep Bluetooth turned on on your smart device at all times so that way it can communicate with your transmitter. It will then ask you to enter your transmitter ID. You can find your transmitter ID either on the very back of the transmitter or on the box that your transmitter came in. It's a series of six letters and numbers that starts with a four. And you can enter your transmitter ID really one of two ways. One is to take a photo and the other is to enter the transmitter serial number by hand. So if you select enter transmitter serial number by hand, you can manually type in your transmitter ID. If you select take photo, it will bring the camera up on your phone with these green markers. And you'll want to take a photo of the longest barcode on that white sticker on your transmitter box. So you'll line those green markers up with that longest barcode. You might want to turn your phone horizontally or sideways to fit that barcode within those green markers. And then it will take the photo and that will also enter your transmitter ID. At that point, it will walk, ask you if you want to watch a video on the sensor insertion. And especially if this is your first sensor insertion, we would recommend that you watch that video. But at this point in time, you do want to make sure that you've inserted a sensor under your skin and you've got your transmitter attached. Then the app will attempt to pair to your transmitter. Now it can take up to 30 minutes for the app to pair to your transmitter. But within 30 minutes, you should get that pairing request. You'll select pair and then you'll get a green check mark that says pair successful. It will then ask you to tap on a green circle to start the two hour warm up. The two hour warm up period is basically the time that it takes for that newly inserted sensor to become fully immersed in that fluid that it's sitting in. So you won't see any glucose readings during that two hour warm up. But at the completion of that two hour warm up, it will ask you to enter in your first two calibrations. So you'll tap on that green circle, you'll check a finger stick on your glucometer and manually enter in your finger stick value and select save and then save again. You'll repeat that process a second time, meaning you'll check another finger stick on a different finger and then tap on that green circle to manually enter in that calibration or that finger stick value. At that point, your Dexcom G5 app will start to read your glucose. You will then see a glucose reading at the top of your Dexcom G5 app home screen. Now this is the home screen of the G5 app. At the bottom of the home screen, you have your trend graph, which is plotting your glucose as little data points as you progress through your sensor session. Above that trend graph, you have your current glucose value, and sort of surrounding or encompassing that current glucose value, you have your trend arrow, indicating the speed and direction of your glucose. And that's a feature that's very unique to a continuous glucose monitor. So really use that, that feature to sort of proactively manage your diabetes and stay one step ahead of it. In the upper left-hand corner of the G5 app, you have these three dashed lines, which represent your main menu. So you can access things like your settings and also your alerts when you tap on that main menu icon. Next to that, you have your glucometer icon. That's what you tap on whenever you want to enter a calibration into your Dexcom system. And then next to that, you have a picture of a person running. That represents Dexcom events, or um, if you wanted to enter in, let's say, how many grams of carbs you consumed, or how much insulin you administered, you could enter that in under events, and that would all be recorded within your Dexcom system for you and your physician to look back on and see how those events are affecting your glucose. In the upper right hand corner of the home screen, you have a Dexcom share symbol as shown by a little triangle, and we'll be reviewing that in a moment. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you have the option to change the alerts on your G5 app at any moment in time. To do that, you would select the main menu icon in the upper left hand corner of your G5 app, select alerts, and then select the alert that you would like to modify. There you can turn the alert on and off, you can change the alert threshold, and you can also change the sound that you want that alert to make. So you can really customize your alerts, you can really you know, choose alerts that sort of meet your individual needs and your preferences. 
Now the Dexcom G5 app is going to alert you every time you're due for a calibration. So you will receive an alert on your G5 app every 12 hours, prompting you to enter in a calibration. When you receive that alert, you'll see a red circle next to that glucometer icon. You would simply tap on that glucometer icon and then manually enter in your blood sugar value or your calibration. If you do not see a red circle next to that glucometer icon, it means that you're not due for a calibration or that it's been less than 12 hours from your last calibration. So now we're going to review Dexcom Share. And Dexcom Share is a feature that's now integrated into the Dexcom G5 mobile app. And again, Share allows the patient to share their glucose information in real time with up to five loved ones or family members called followers. Dexcom Share is now represented by a little triangular icon in the upper right hand corner of your G5 app. When that triangular icon is multicolored as seen here, it means that Share is set up, it's active, and it's working properly. If you ever see that triangular icon and it's black in color with a red dot next to it, that means that Share is set up but it's not functioning properly and that your follower is likely not receiving your glucose information. But when you first log in your G5 app for the very first time, that triangular icon will be gray in color, indicating that Share is not yet set up. So when you're ready to set it up, you'll click on that gray triangular icon, and the first few screens will walk you through or describe to you how Share works. It will then prompt you to invite your followers. So you're going to enter in your follower's name and email address. And you do need to provide it with your follower's email address because it's going to send your follower an email invite that will expire within seven days. Make sure you use an email that your follower can access on their smart device because your follower will need to log into that email on their smart device, accept the invite, and download the follow app. Also, make sure you use an email address to invite your follower that is different than the email address you used to establish your account to log into your G5 app. Now, if at this point during the share setup, you're not sure who you want your followers to be, that is okay because you can also invite additional followers at a later time. And you can do that by selecting an icon of a person with a plus sign next to it on your share home screen. The share setup will then ask you if you want to grant your follower with access to your trend graph, meaning do you want your follower to be able to view up to the last 24 hours of glucose information. You'll then need to indicate alert thresholds that you recommend your follower use, meaning what alert level do you recommend your follower be alerted for a high or a low glucose. And these really are recommended settings. So your follower can choose to keep these recommended settings or they can change the alert settings at a later time. One alert setting I do want to point out to you is the no more data option. If you toggle that switch to on, it means that your follower will receive an alert if they're no longer receiving your glucose information. So depending on the situation, that can be a fairly good safety feature or feature to keep turned on. Once you've set those recommended alert levels, you'll then go ahead and send the invitation and your follower should receive that invitation shortly. Now this is the home screen of the share feature. So if share is set up and you click on that triangular icon, this is what you'll see. At the top of the share home screen, you can turn sharing on or off. So if you toggle that to off, it means it will stop sharing with all of your followers. Now you do also have the option to stop sharing with an individual follower. To do that, you would just click on the follower's name, toggle that switch to off, and it would stop sharing with that individual follower, but then all the rest of the followers on your list would continue to get your glucose information. In the middle of that share home screen, you have your sharing status, which indicates if sharing is working properly and if your follower is receiving your glucose information. Now here in this image, you can see that it's mostly green with a green check mark. And that means that your share, or that means that your follower is receiving your glucose information and the share feature is working properly.
But if any component of that image were red or you saw a red X, that would mean that share is not working properly and likely your follower is not receiving your glucose information. So if your follower ever tells you that they're not seeing your glucose information, this is a good spot to check to see where the problem might be occurring. And it's also important for you to understand that in order for share to work, both the sharer and the follower need an active internet connection on their smart device. So that could either be with the Wi-Fi connection or that could be with the cellular data plan on a phone. Now when your follower clicks on their follow app and opens it up, this is the home screen that they will see. So here you can see that if the share granted the follower with access to the trend graph, they'll be able to view the trend graph on their home screen. And above that trend graph, you'll see they can either view the last 3, 6, 12, or 24 hours worth of glucose information. Above that, they'll see the current glucose value for that share, along with the trend arrow information. And like I mentioned earlier, the follower can change their alert settings at any point in time. To do that, they can click on the gear symbol in the upper right-hand corner of the follow app home screen. And so the follower can choose unique alert levels that are different than the alert levels that the sharer has selected on their G5 app. Now it's also important for the follower to know or understand that the follow app does not have the ability to override the phone settings. So if the phone volume is on uh, silent or very low, or if they have that mute switch or do not disturb option enabled, they will not hear the alert for a high or low glucose. So lastly, we'll review the Dexcom Clarity Report app. Now, if you're not familiar with Clarity, it is the software that you and your physician will use to retrospectively review your glucose data. Now, your G5 app is sending your glucose information over to your Clarity account every three hours on its own via the internet connection on your phone. Now, when you download the Clarity Report app onto your phone and you open it for the very first time, it may automatically log you in with your existing Dexcom account. But if it does not, or if in the future it ever prompts you for a username and password, make sure you use the same username and password that you had used to log into your Dexcom G5 app. Now the home screen of the Clarity Report app will provide you with two options. One is to share data and the other is to view a PDF. If you select view a PDF, it will generate a PDF report with some of the graphs and charts that Clarity has to offer but on your phone. And those graphs and charts will default to display the most recent 14 days of glucose information. If you select share data, it will provide you with two options in which you have to share your glucose information with your physician. So let's talk about the generate code option first. If you select generate code, it will provide you with a 12 digit code that you can provide to your physician. And if your physician uses that code, it will grant them access to all of the glucose information that has ever been uploaded into your Clarity account. Now you can choose how long you wanna make that code valid for. You can make it valid for three months, six months, or one year. We would recommend that you make it valid for one year. It will really simplify things between you and your physician. Now the other option you have to share your glucose data or your clarity reports with your physician is through the use of an email invite. So if your physician's office has established a Clarity Healthcare Provider account, they can send you an email invite that contains a uh, temporary authorization key that is valid for 30 days. So you can type that temporary authorization key within the Clarity Report app under Accept Invitation. So if you select Accept Invitation, you can go ahead and enter in that temporary authorization key there. And that will also provide your physician with access to all the glucose information that has ever been uploaded into your Clarity account. So lastly, we want to review information pertaining to your transmitter. So your transmitter has a battery inside of it that is good for three months. So that means you do need to change your transmitter every three months. And again, each transmitter is assigned a unique transmitter ID that again, you can find either on the back of your transmitter or on the box that your transmitter came in. And again, it's a series of six letters and numbers that starts with the number four. Now, every time you change your transmitter, you want to make sure that you enter that new transmitter ID into your display device. 
So if you're using the Dexcom G5 mobile app, you would select that main menu icon in the upper left-hand corner of your G5 app, select settings, and then select pair new, and you can enter in the new transmitter ID there. If you're using the receiver, you would also go to the main menu and select settings, and then select transmitter serial number to enter in that new transmitter ID. Now you can only enter a new transmitter ID into your display device when you're not in an active sensor session. So this is something that you would want to do in between sensor sessions or once your sensor session has ended. Great, so that completes our webinar for today. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, please remember to take a look at the indication for use and safety statement in your quick start guide or your user guide. We do encourage you to check our website for additional webinars that we offer. And I'm part of the patient care department. We're a group of certified diabetes educators here to provide you with ongoing support and answer your questions. Our phone number and our hours are listed here. So if you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. And thank you again for joining our webinar today.